Now we're going to talk about the proper plane position for the euphonium. Okay. Uh, first, let's review our posture. Make sure that we're sitting on our sits bones. We're not too far back. We're not too far forward. Uh, knees are below the hips and back is off the chair. Okay. Uh, a real quick and easy way to, to double check your plan with the right posture is if you take the ball of your fist, put it in the small of your back and you just give yourself a little push forward. All right. So what's important about um, playing the euphonium is that you have to make sure that the instrument comes to you. You don't go to the instrument. Uh, it's, it's a real common mistake for, uh, for smaller students uh, to rest their, their horn on their, on their thigh or on their knee and then as they grow they continue to do that and it forces the back and the shoulders to kind of hunch over it to, to play the mouthpiece. Okay, so my assistant here is obviously a, a full-grown individual, so he can't rely on holding uh, the instrument and resting it on his knee or on his thigh. So uh, again, what's important is that once we establish our proper posture, um, that you physically lift the horn and you bring the mouthpiece right up to your mouth. Okay. Again, it will vary per individual. Um, each person is different, so um, how they hold and carry their instrument may be different depending on whom you sit next to. So make sure that it's right for you. Okay. So taking a look at at our at our assistant here. Um, again, you can see that his spine is aligned. His his knees are below his hips. He's playing at the his he's sitting at the optimal position. To produce a good sound, okay. He's using his left hand um, to to grip the instrument, um, and then he's using his right hand, nice and relaxed, to to function the valves. See, so, as you can see on this particular instrument, we do have a fourth valve um, that helps with some of the tuning and intonation. We're really not going to cover any fourth valve uh, fingerings today, but. Uh, it will affect how he holds this particular instrument to make sure that his that his uh, left hand is available to to play. Okay, so again, uh, what we have here is pretty much the model of what you want to look like as you're holding your instrument. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm, we're going to show you what not to do. Okay, um, so again, a common mistake is that. Um, students will rest their instrument on their lap and then approach the instrument as opposed to the other way around. So as you can see here, instantly, once he puts the instrument on his thigh, he needs to adjust his, his neck, his head, and his shoulders in order just to reach the instrument. Um, this is what you do not want to do. Uh, what you're doing is your spine is get going out of alignment and you're restricting how much air that you can effectively put through your instrument. Okay? Um, leaving the instrument where it is, I'm going to ask my assistant to now sit up straight. You see how much of a gap there is in between where the mouthpiece rests and where his, where his head naturally aligns to the body. That's a huge distance to cover. So again, once you set your posture, it's very important that you bring the instrument up to you as such. Okay? Now, I do understand that sometimes during a long rehearsal, um, you can get tired, uh, your arms can get a little fatigued. If you ever need to, you can grab a small towel or you can grab a small pillow to rest on, on your leg. Um, that would also help, but the, um, the more you can get conditioned and the more you, that you can get accustomed to holding your instrument up to, to your face, uh, the better that, that you'll get.